My work is all autobiographical, so it's rooted in personal history. They're large mixed media constructions, and I call them constructions because they're not paintings, they're not sculptures, they're not assemblage. It's sort of this cross hybrid of all of it. I feel is that the work becomes an entity. I can tell when it starts to breathe on its own. It's not just a set of objects or something we're looking at. I'm, I'm interacting with it. And that's when I feel like that it's, it's got life. What drives my work are internal, primal emotions. You know, usually it's a set of binary emotions in each work. I believe and I hope that by exploring just these universal emotions that everyone feels, that it makes it very accessible to the viewer. Because everyone deals with tragedy, love, loneliness, loss, joy, despair. We all deal with those emotions. And that, to me, is how it relates to someone else. In essence, all of my work is about life, death, and hope and the hope needed to get from point A to point B through life. So there's not a narrative of what physically may have happened or any reference to any physical object. The work is all non-representational. But a viewer is going to react with an emotion. But you have to be drawn in and be willing to be with the piece long enough to see how it makes you feel. The work is intricate, but it's also large, so there's kind of this gestalt of looking at the piece all at one time, which is what I'd, I'd like, because we, that's how we process things. We're not linear in our uh, emotions. We can feel a thousand different emotions at once. But because the work is also intricate and detailed, it invites more microscopic dissection of it, which to me is a lot of how we look at life and how we live is that we have just these competing emotions and situations that come at us and we have to deal with them all at the same time. It's all at once. The titles of my work are very important to me because that's what guides me and that was my history in it. It has to be in this little genre of feeling. But there is, I think, a narrative when you see all the titles. My work is largely organic. Many of the materials that I use, the found objects, are organic as well. And they've gone through their own history. Rather than repurpose them, I like to feel like I'm honoring the past that they had. Everything is archaic. Remnants of Lovers relates to the issues around leaving and staying and going and coming. There were empty frames. I don't call it empty space, I actually call it pregnant space, but it looks like empty space and how it's contained and it reminded me of the screen door and your which side you're on depends on how you look at the situation. You're either waiting for somebody to come who may never come, you're looking at the door that someone's just left and you didn't want them to go, or you wanted them to go, or you're from the perspective of coming in and either joy or hesitancy around those emotions. So Remnants of Lovers in particular is about leaving and being left. How we look at what's left over and from what viewpoint do we spin history and all of that relates to the hope you have in moving forward. I think artists use materials that they like using. I'm very tactile. I like digging into things, quite literally digging into the work. It's not enough to me to have just a two-dimensional surface anymore. I'm from a family of surgeons and scientists and doctors, and that influences my work whether I want it to or not. There's a lot of use of wires and webbing in my work, and it's not webbing like spider webs. They're surgical knots. I grew up helping my dad in his office as a plastic surgeon. The physical line work is my handwriting. Those are my gestures. And they're connections from one thing to another or connections through space, through time and space. There's an intricacy to it. It's almost like making lace. And that you can't see 
the whole until it's done. But each little tiny knot, each little tiny aspect of it is critically important or else the whole thing falls apart. I use bones in my work. I don't try to make them not look like bones. They don't mean death to me. They actually indicate structure and life. It's the only part of humans that end up surviving over thousands of years. So there's a, a reference back to humanity with that. I have a generalized idea when I begin a piece, but because of the intricacy of the pieces, because of their size, because sometimes things just work the way they work, it's not planned out at all. And if I did plan it out, then why do it, for one thing? I mean, that sort of ruins it. And it also would ruin the journey of going through it. By the time I finish, there are four dozen layers on it. If I dissected a piece, you could see the archaeology and the artist's history. And I'm a little sad when it's over because I create a relationship with this piece. I'm always amazed at the indomitable human spirit, this endless ability to rise from the ashes and for renewal. And that's what goes into every piece, is that this hope that we will continue to do that. Thank you.